Well, Singapore is the biophilic city, and uh, that was the title of the film that we made, uh, and it's been very popular around the world. People are using it to plan what they are doing in their cities. Um, I write about it in my books, and it continues to be the best example in my view. And we do look at cities around the world. So there are lots of places who are now starting on this journey, but I think Singapore bega began it earlier. The um, journey is a long one because it is unfolding as something that is a genuine commitment to changing the way professions in the built environment work. They've been separate. Landscape architects in one area, architects in another, planners in another, interior design people over here. And all of them have not really taken responsibility for nature to be brought into everything that they do. And biophilic design says that's a real problem because we are innately connected to nature and we need it in everything we do in every part of our lives. So our houses and workspaces and schools and shops and factories all need to be built around it. So Singapore hasn't gone that far yet but it has begun and it has shown that you can build rooftop gardens and biophilic walls and you can bring it into design in the lighting and the materials and the, the whole structure of how we build. It's beginning, uh, but um, I'd rather be where Singapore is than other cities in terms of their journey, but um, uh, I'd say it's going to take another 20 years to really pull it off. It's interesting to see how the birds and the uh, butterflies uh, uh, are using these uh, uh, transit areas as their ways of transiting. Uh, and it is now quite a bit of evidence to show that the uh, migratory species are, are, are using this structure as well. So yeah, you're doing more than pushing people in cars down these roads. Um, and it, it's a very interesting development to see how beautiful they've become and how associated with a Singapore experience they are. People go home thinking, oh, it's just so beautiful. As soon as you get out of the airport and drive down that road, the enclosed archways of, of the streets are very attractive. Um, I think it's important to go beyond that, uh, to see how all our walkways, cycleways, and transitways are also given this same treatment. In, in a way, you've favoured the car. <laughs> Uh, the LTA and their stations and their train network does not go through these same archways. In fact, you can't see a tree or a bush. You know, no self-respecting bit of nature gets close to the LTA facilities. Uh, it's time that that is incorporated. And um, certainly walkways are so much more attractive once they enclose you. You get shade. You need shade in Singapore. And uh, you've got it for the cars. The cars don't need shade. <laughs> uh, people walking need to engage with nature. And so every walkway should really have that same treatment. Um, the, the other thing is that the roads are starting to widen out in order to put more nature into them and in fact becoming less pedestrian friendly. Uh, and there's a lot of space for the cars down these roads and not much space for pedestrians. That's a problem because biophilic design is not just about making it look nice. It does look nice, but it's also about engaging with nature and you do that when you're walking. Not many car drivers are actually engaging with nature. They're, they're affected by it and it's, it, it is one level, but the real engagement will come when walking happens. So you need to get more and more people out of cars and that means using the, that transport space 
to encourage more and more public transport use. And you do have lots of plans for extending the MRT system, getting better integrated buses and so on, and high speed rail, all of this is gonna happen. So there will be a need to um, make sure that that works better and better, and you can therefore uh, actually begin to contract the space of road capacity. You will not need to keep providing more road capacity. That is a major breakthrough in thinking in the world cities that's now happening and Singapore needs to be part of that. But you need to reclaim it with greenery, not just sort of give it up. Uh, it, it's going to be uh, less asphalt, more green. Well, those numbers are interesting. If you take out the national park area uh, and just take the urban area, uh, it's a much higher proportion, that is uh, the asphalt and concrete, if you like, for transport. Um, but it's not nearly as high as some cities in the world. The, the really car-dependent cities have a lot of parking spaces and a lot of road space, uh, up to about 30%. Um, and they are now seeing that this is a terrible waste of money and it's not very good for the economic output and productivity of the, the city. So they're starting to reclaim that road space to take down freeways even, like the Chongatang in Seoul. Um, so I, I think there is potential to see the reclaiming of asphalt as part of Singapore's future. Um, and that uh, the biophilic design will impact on road space and, and all the spaces that are used for transport. Um, so you, you can imagine the, green, the greening going not just in the space of the, of, of the transport uh, facility, but also inside the stations, inside the bus areas inside the vehicles themselves, the trains and buses, and, and uh, that, that this next step into how transport is made into a biophilic design output could, um, could well involve some quite uh, radically different uh, approaches. Um, but that's what biophilic design does. It starts out there on the street, but it slowly engulfs you. It takes you over. And uh, I think we're just beginning that journey. Um, but I think it's a very attractive one. It's not expensive. It's a matter of us thinking differently. And uh, it's a very exciting future that's unfolding. And Singapore is the leader.